Earlier, I spoke to Sean Miner. He's an expert on China's foreign and international economic policy. I started by asking him, why now? What's happening in China is that uh, one word is debt. So China has borrowed large amounts to finance breakneck economic growth. And now we're seeing uh, this debt level come to an even higher level. And uh, what's, what's happening is that the pace is very strong, very fast. And so I think what Moody's is seeing is that in order to continue growing at this fast pace, they're going to need to borrow at the same pace uh, that they have been. And that's unsustainable. So uh, I've seen some people saying, you know, it's slowing growth and it's being propped up as you describe it. Um, which one's more concerning? Is it, is it the borrowing or is it that the growth just isn't where it should be? And growth in China compared to everywhere else, I mean, it's a whole other ball game, isn't it? I mean, right. still, even... China's growing in their 6.5%. Uh, they have in their five-year plan that they would like to grow that pace until 2020. So I think that's where you're seeing the problem is that in order to make that goal, you're going to see increased debt uh, and increased uh, problems for the corporate sector. That's where we're really seeing the largest amounts of debt is the corporate debt. Uh, because what we have here is Chinese government actually doesn't have that much debt. I think it's around 40% of GDP. But because Chinese uh, companies, a lot of them, the state-owned enterprises, are connected to the government, I think Moody's is linking those two and saying Chinese government is responsible for those. It, there are some critics, though, who say that Moody's just doesn't understand the systems within China, uh, and you've kind of alluded to some of that. And, and overall, mortgage debt, uh, it's, it's low compared to what happened here in the United States. I mean, a lot of the ingredients we saw in the West that kind of help kind of teeter the economy in one direction, those symptoms aren't in place in China. Uh, what would you say about the, the people who are criticizing this? Yeah, so two things. So I think what's happening is, first off, Chinese debt is very hard to understand because you have uh, the state-owned banks where a, you know, a big portion of the debt is happening and it's easier to track. But then you have this kind of side area where you have shadow banking or these non-bank entities where a lot of lending is happening and that's very hard to track. So what we know is that China has a lot of debt and it's rising. What we don't know is exactly how much that is and what the pace is. So uh, I think what the Chinese government is saying is we have it under control. We know those levels, but I think a lot of people are pretty skeptical. So for uh, the layperson, the overall effect of this and what's next? So the overall effect, I, don't, I think, will be actually minimal. So foreigners only hold about 4% of Chinese uh, debt, Chinese government debt. And so uh, that part of the borrowing, I think, offshore foreign currency of Chinese government debt will be more expensive. Um, you'll, it'll be less lucrative. But I think uh, domestically, it's going to have minimal impact. and. Uh, may, you may see some impact in the currency where the offshore markets have uh, see the currency uh, depreciate a bit. Sean Miner, thanks so much.